Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to hit some scientists whining, a look at stellar super flare activity, but the focus today is on the sun, its current activity, and what we're watching for in the next few days, including flaring and a geomagnetic storm. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where we find the sun was moderately active, surging near the active region at the northern reach of the coronal hole, two M-class solar flares, but still nothing in the way of eruptions sending plasma towards the Earth. Let's start with the solar flares from earlier this morning, two smaller M-class events visible on the GOES X-ray flux, and they came from everywhere except where we might have expected. First was a combined eruptive signature from two active regions, and the second from a new sunspot group at the limb turning in on the south. Nothing from the bigger group up north, so the focus for flaring is shifting this morning. We're also keeping an eye on the solar wind. Phi angle flip yesterday has set the stage and the coronal hole stream will be arriving tonight or tomorrow. The phi angle flip has already preconditioned the Earth's magnetic field a bit with the magnetometer and the KP index showing a mild disturbance, bringing values up off the floor. Earthquake and volcano watch is still ongoing from the coronal hole, but now we've got the solar wind itself to watch for. G1 to G2 level events expected when it arrives. First article today, folks, solar scientists are whining like wild as the cuts to the U.S. science sector roll in. I can understand personal frustrations about specific projects, but they want to make it seem like all is lost. No. Every vital thing is still up and running and will stay that way, same like the National Weather Service. The peripheral pet projects, some of which do have value, are not vital and often are following a path of bad science. Pay no mind to the budget cut crybabies. Everything is fine. Finally, solid piece here on stellar super flares with a focus on G-type stars like the Sun. While they caught flares of up to X1 million on other stars, they say a G5 star like the Sun has the maximum flare of about X1000. Once again, every 5,500 to 6,000 years. It's the same it's been reported before. It's at least 10 times bigger than the Carrington event from 1859, by the way, which scientists think would kill most of humanity due to the infrastructure loss if it happened today. Just a reminder, the Sun can go much, much bigger. Folks, we're doing the Pole Shift Conference today. There's one almost every month. Strongly recommend making it out to one this year or one of our many other events. There are big observer events every couple of weeks or every week if you catch the right month, and observers who show up randomly often get lucky and catch me there, in which case I'm often inclined to just sit and talk for as long as you got. Come see us, folks, seriously. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.